names of the two decedents, the last two decedents that were pulled from the property on Walford Road. Of course, everybody recognizes Lieutenant Bobo with the Sheriff's Office. Um, we were able to do examinations, uh, extensive examinations, all, all day yesterday. And based on information we were able to provide and um, be able to confirm with family members, which we spoke to this morning, um, one of the decedents is Megan Lee McCraw Coxey. She's a white female, 25 years of age. She lived on Shalin Drive here in Spartanburg. Uh, her body was discovered on the 6th of November. Her body was removed on the 7th of November. Uh, the cause of death listed uh, is pending currently, but preliminary information reveals a gunshot wound to the head. Uh, more testing will be performed. And then the second decedent's name, uh, which is actually her husband, is Johnny Joe Coxey. He's a white male, 29 years of age. His address is the same as her, Shalin Drive here in Spartanburg. He was the last body uh, that we discovered, and it was on the 7th of November. He was also removed on the 7th of November. His cause of death is pending, but preliminary information reveals gunshot wounds to the torso and more testing will be performed on him as well. Um, basically, that's the information. You know, my responsibility is the identification, cause, and manner. Of course, giving the information here, once the case is ready to be closed, uh, I'm definitely prepared to say this is definitely a homicide. Can no question. Names, yes, Megan, M-E-A-G-A-N, and I'm going to provide you with, uh, you know, a, a spelling and whatnot, but... Um, does that help you? Yes, thank you so much. Okay. Pass it across. How long have they, they been there? Uh, a post-mortem interval on especially burials is uh, a wide open window. The science of that, you, just, you asked me about the science, uh, is fairly broad for a reason. Uh, it's, it's kind of problematic to try and narrow that down real definitively, but information that we've been able to obtain uh, was pr approximately 11 months. Uh, as far as the burial. No, sir. The, there's no way of putting an exact time of death on that. It just has to be reported between, you know, the dates uh, that we were found and, and dates last seen or someone spoke to them. And what type of weapon was used in terms of firearm or bullet? Have no idea. Um, there's going to have to be testing on evidence that we were able to recover, but right now that's. I wouldn't want to speculate on that as well. How many shots were in each of the bodies? Uh, I'm not prepared to say exactly how many at this time. Um, uh, my anthropologists are actually doing some reconstruction uh, for me to assist to make sure that that number is correct, and I'm not prepared to give that exact number at this time. Were the bodies intact? Yes. This may be more so a question for Kevin, but were they reported missing at any point? Um, to answer your question, Brianna, and make sure we got full disclosure here, when you say intact, there were some portions of the body where we're not able to recover, just to let you know. But as far as the, you know, percentage-wise, I'm not prepared to get into that, but I'm not going to mislead you and say 100% on, on both were recovered. Okay. Okay. Is the body like, like limbs missing? Well, generally what do you mean? Well, I, I really don't want to get into that because the sheriff still has an open investigation as well. But uh, there... I don't have 100% of, of both bodies. I'm going to say that. We saw investigators yesterday with bags and buckets out mm -hmm. on the scene. Was, was that part of the uh, identification process of these bodies, and is that why maybe it took a little longer to identify them? No, sir. That's a furtherance of the investigation, and basically that's um, just good police work on the part of the sheriff and, and uh, the rest of the agencies um, helping follow up there. They're sifting... Uh, through dirt that would have been around the remains just to make sure that there's no other evidence there. Coxie is spelled different for the two of them. Was it C-O-X-E-Y or S-I-E? It should be C-O-X-I-E. Okay. My apologies. Sort of general terms, how were they identified? Was there, was there identification on the body? Was it dental records in general terms? Sir? I have dental records on one, uh, but the um, best way of identification was through extensive tattoos on both bodies. Uh, those tattoos, uh, uh, pictures of those tattoos, and I'm not meaning of them being deceased, but I had, I was able to obtain pictures of the tattoos with them in life, 
and I asked the families to confirm that, and based on that confirmation and what we discovered, that's how, uh, and, and I'm talking about extensive tattoos, not just one or two, but there were extensive tattoos that we were able to match up to both bodies. And who was, who was the last person to have talked to these people in Wednesday? I'm unaware. So in, in general terms. No, sir, I'm unaware of that. That would be the sheriff's purview as far as that's concerned. Did you have an idea going into this investigation who these people were and he told you who they were? He hadn't told me, uh, but the sheriff, uh, of course, his, his men have, have spoke to him, and I'll let Lieutenant Bobo go into that. So were both these bodies fully covered, or was there any sign of any sexual attack at all? Well, given the state uh, that they were in, uh, a determination of any sexual, you know, uh, question probably wouldn't, wouldn't be an area that I'd be able to address, and yes, they were clothed. Were they exactly in the property where these bodies found? Uh, they were, as one would drive where you guys have been camped out at the, at the fence, they were essentially straight back and to the right uh, just a little bit. And uh, you guys have, you know, th there have been numerous helicopters fl and planes flying over, but it, it was a, a small distance from, from where you guys were at, but it wasn't very deep in the property in relation to what I know about the total acreage there. So it wasn't near the container where Caleb Brown was found? Yes, sir. It was not far from the container. Okay. How deep were these graves in comparison to what Charlie was in? I'm not going to go into the exact depth, but we did record, of course, our part of our process would have been uh, to be able to reconstruct if need be, but the, it was considerable. I mean, you guys saw us digging out there, and, and the, the dirt was fairly hard, so that's why it took us a while to, to get them extracted. What is it like to do your job this time? I know you guys have been very busy, but what, what have been the, the biggest challenge that you have, you know, day by day there's something new? Here. Well, as far as the challenge, um, you know, been at this a long time, uh, but the, the challenge really isn't the, uh, w what I'm thinking about when I'm there, it, it was the family that uh, I addressed and my investigator addressed. We, we went simultaneously to both families this morning and be able to give them some answers, you know, it's, it's bad news, but also they, they have questions that we're able to give them answers to. So to answer your question, um, this isn't a run mill case. It, it never has been. We've had burials before, uh, but um, had true professionals in here uh, assisting us with it to make sure we were doing it the best way possible so we can gain all the evidence. And then um, hopefully if we have to go to court, it will be rewarding later on. What was the reaction of the families? Understandable remorse uh, and, and extreme grief. Um, one family had had no clue. They, they you know didn't know there was an association, and one had been wondering about it um, since you know all this broke last week. What city do the families live in? Where these folks from? Um, the address that you have here is where this couple lived here in Spartanburg. Mothers, uh, the. Uh, the family of the female decedent lives here in Spartanburg. The family of the male decedent lives out of town. And I will tell you that uh, both families asked me that the press respect their, um, you know, their need for privacy right now. They're grieving, and I did tell them that I would express that to you. Yes, sir. Uh, how much major processing is left out there? Uh, well, of course, my, my processing is is you know, complete now that I have the bodies, but I'll let Lieutenant Bobo address that question as far as the sheriff's angle is concerned. Do the couple have children? Um, I'm, I've been told that there is one child in common uh, with these two individuals, yes. Has that child been accounted for? Um, I know the, the sheriff's office was, was checking on that today, but we have been made aware of, you know, that child's, you know, location and presence. So along with these two bodies, very tragically, was there anything in the graves themselves might give a clue what went on with like handbags or you know some of the possessions they may have had on well, we collected everything that uh, we could find down to the sifting, um, and there were some minute things that we found during the sifting. But as far as a total accounting, uh, we will have to take the findings once uh, from the crime scene itself and, uh, you know, basically do a comparison with the solicitor whenever it comes to the information that Lieutenant Bobo and the sheriff's men have been able to come up with, and we'll let them do that. I'm going to ask Lieutenant Bobo to come up because we're fielding a lot of questions about the yeah. sheriff's angle, and I want him to be able to address those. Just to fill in some blanks, and I hope this is the last time we're before you, 
Um, Ms. McGraw's mother had reported the couple as missing persons to us back in December of last year. Um, both of them had just been rec recently released from jail earlier that month. Um, the female had told her mother that she had, a, had gotten a job and had asked the mother to bond her out of jail so she could go work this job and her mother agreed to that. <coughs> and then uh, the mother reported them missing to us on December the 22nd of 2015. I believe um, Megan got released from jail or arrested on December the 15th of 2015. Um, it was unlike Megan not to, to stay in contact with her mother. Uh, so once mother had tried multiple times and was unsuccessful, that's when she filed a missing persons report with us. Um, both had a history, and I'm trying to not to speak ill of the deceased by any means, but both had a history of panhandling, you know, around like I-26 and Regal Road in an effort to make money. Um, but, uh, you know, leads in their uh, missing case, you know, were few and far between. Um, after the mother reported them missing to us, uh, both had warrants come out on them for various offenses. Um, and then Saturday, when Todd Colehelp reinitiated contact with us, uh, he called both of them by name, and that's when he was seen on the property because he was pointing out their graves. Do we know at this point, um, I know you guys had mentioned that there may not be any more bodies on the property. Do, do, are we still pretty sure of that at this time, or is there still going to be a thorough search of that property? We feel at this time we have done a thorough search, uh, and I believe after the containers were moved today, uh, we're still going to have a deputy guarding that scene, but as far as anybody processing that acreage right now, that part for now is going to be over unless something else comes up and we need to go back out there. Uh, and let me clear up something that occurred yesterday. I believe some people thought we had brought him back out to the scene yesterday because they saw the backhoe back out there, and that was not the case at all. The reason the backhoe was there was to fill in the grave sites for these two individuals we're discussing today and so that we could remove that container that we took out of there today. That's the only reason the backhoe was back there yesterday. Is there any other active investigation? I can't listen to three people at the same time. Oh, yes, so let's thank you. Mr. What was Mr. Colhep's connection as far as you know at this stage with the, the, the deceased couple? That we how, don't know. How, how do they come to know each other? How, how do they come to be on the phone? That we don't know. Okay. Is there a connection between them and Charlie Carver and Kayla Brown that you guys know of yet? Not that I'm aware of, no, sir. So what Is was there the any other active investigation on other Colhep properties or any other site related to Todd Colhep going on now? I'm sure there is, but exactly where, I don't know, and not that we're going to share the locations of other properties. Are you all involved with these investigations? Yes, sir. Have we given you guys any indication there could be other bodies in other places? As far as I'm aware, no. So the offenses of the deceased couple were these just minor offenses, nothing really worth registering. I mean, what, what were the offenses? I don't the warrants were out for them. One, uh, I think the warrants on him were for master's court offenses, and the one on her was for a general sessions offense. So am I incorrect uh, in remembering that Kayla Brown said that there were four bodies that were, that were told to her that were on the property? Correct. She found three. Correct. Is there still one more to go, or was she incorrect? You know, when she made that statement, it's my understanding, you know, that was right after she had been recovered. So, you know, and I don't know if that's something he may have told her to keep her compliant. But um, right now we think we have found any deceased that should be there. The child of them is accounted for? I think. Yes. Would you want to have the dogs back out there one more time just to see? I would have to ask our investigators. I don't know. Did he mention why he had picked this couple or why this couple was targeted or killed? I really can't go into that. Is he going to be formally charged with the murder of Charlie Carver first and then these, these two? As well? At some point, our investigators are in constant you know, communication with the solicitor's office and at the appropriate time. You know, there's no need to rush. Um, so, um, you know, at the appropriate time when they feel like, you know, 
you're to that point, then warrants will be signed. So, so what's the, the, the deceased lady? What's her relationship with Mr. Uh, to the suspect? Was it like an employer employee? Sir, I said I don't know. <laughs> well, could it possibly be a delay in charges, though, is just getting everything together, or is it a matter of investigation, more to collect? Well, there's no reason to rush. He's, you know, his bond's been denied. He's not going anywhere. So, you know, whether you charge him today or charge him in a few weeks, it, uh, you want to make sure you got all your ducks in a row. Was he apprehended on the property or at his home on Thursday? He was apprehended at his home. I think the sheriff mistakenly misinformed. Uh, we hit search warrants simultaneously last Thursday at his residence and at the property. Um, he, he was at his residence. Uh, investigators were questioning him, and he admitted knew and knowing the couple from Anderson. And then, when our investigators on the scene relayed to investigators at his house that they had found Kayla and found her alive, that's when he was arrested. What's his level of cooperation now? To be honest, I don't know. As far as I know, it has not changed. And, and am I correct? I've heard that uh, the cooperation came because he was allowed to see his mother. He transferred some money to a friend's child's bank account, and he wanted to deliver a certain picture to his mother. That is my understanding, yes, sir. The container that was removed from the property today, that is for sure the container that Kayla Brown was kept in? Correct. Okay. Can you tell us more describing what the inside of that container is like? No, sir. No, it's just there was a spray-painted number on that. Was that just an, an evidence item number? It was 335. It's spray-painted in hot I, paint. Um, I have no idea. Okay. What was that? Uh, I'm not going to release that either. Uh, have you checked his uh, residence property thoroughly, including the backyard? Yes, there's no way his residence could hold a container of that size. No, 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 no. Or any bodies that may be buried on the property? Yes, sir. As far as I know, yes, sir. How would you say that it was complete sentence, that what you've done there on that property and searching it? We have searched his property and his residence. Um, I, find, I think we have released his residence. And we're going to keep a deputy on his property in Woodruff indefinitely. How is Miss Brown doing? I have no idea. I have, hadn't heard. Yes, sir. Have you talked to Kayla Brown? And uh, if you have, what is her reaction about these findings? Do you know? Sir, I haven't spoken with her. Do you know if she is still in the hospital recovering or is she? Um, it's my understanding she's out of the hospital. She's out of the hospital. Yes, sir. How could. A 2003 case in Chesney be related to Todd Clark and these more recent events, apparently more recent. I don't know that they are related other than him. Do you, are you uncomfortable with the fact that there's a big gap in time there? That's part of the ongoing investigation. Can you talk about the amount of weapons that were found on the property? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Do you have any indications whether or not um, Colbert supplied Coffey or any of her family with drugs or anything like that? I don't have that information. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the mother had agreed that she could come out on jail for for a job. Did, did the mother talk to the daughter who who died, who, who you've identified? Um, did she talk about what job she was doing? Is there any information from the mom about where she was going to do a job? Not, not that I'm aware of, don't I? I mean, she, she's out, uh, she took a bond drill, uh, out on her out of jail to do a job. Was I, did I misunderstand that? that no, her, Megan asked her mother to bond her out because she had a job lined up. What type of job, I don't know. So the mom has no idea what job it was? No, ma'am. And did that child have any connection to the child that, that Todd no. Collins had referred to no. as paying for? No. Is this his child? Do we know if it was his child? Todd Colhip, the child in the request that he made in order to... Um, I don't know the relationship. We don't know who that child is? We do. Okay. Do you know he, if he has any children? No, sir, I don't. Well, one more question, guys. The, there was equipment identified at his home. Uh, is there chains and stuff, stuff like that? Is there evidence that he could have committed other kidnappings? We're not going to go into the type of evidence we collected, either at his home or his property. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate it. Oh, uh, Rex, can you get their date of birth? It's not on here. Which, which, yeah. Um,